And today I'm going to be putting together and painting this Tau Piranha. Uh, here we have the sub-assemblies. These are all the small um, pieces I kept apart to make painting a little easier. For the most part, um, it's one unit. Uh, right here is the magnetization I did for the front weapon. Instead of magnetizing the weapon, I put one right there in that clip and one on the, uh, on the bottom. This way you can change the front weapon between the burst cannon and the fusion blaster, I think is the name of it. Um, Basically, you can put it together and then uh, the clip will hold it in. I found this is the best way, I've, uh, I think at least, to magnetize this front weapon. As you can also see, I don't have the riders in either. Um, that'll make it a little bit easier to paint also. So this is the color I'm gonna be using for my army. It is a pearlescent paint, uh, usually used for RC cars, but I really like the way it looks. It has a bright blue um, pearlescent finish and it looks really nice. Um, for most of this painting tutorial, you can substitute your own main colors and you know kind of follow along with what I'm doing to see if that helps. Uh, I'm doing the same base coat on all these small bits and I left the front bit just a little bit uh, unpainted because I'm going to be adding some paint there in a little bit. And then going back with some surface primer to recoat the front of the vehicle. I'm going to have a fade going into this. Next, I'm going to be using this uh, Anarchy Models Mini Hex Grid stencil set. Uh, this is a callback to my original Tau Army. I ended up finding a pattern I really liked. And um, if you do want to get stencils, this is a great, great place to get them. The only problem I have with it is getting all the little stencil, all the little hexagons out of the stencil. It will take a while, but once you've got one of them clear, you can use it uh, quite a bit. As you can see, it's, it's a quite a nightmare to get them all out of there. So much later after I get all these done, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and have it masked off and we're gonna have the undercoat go from that black to the blue pearlescent. And I'm making sure that everything is pressed down very firmly along with the creases. And we're gonna be hitting this with some rune fang steel, just on that front part. Uh, the next is I'm gonna do about a 50-50 between rune fang steel and the color of my tank, which is that pearlescent blue, to kind of get this light blue. And then I'm gonna put some of that in between the two colors. Now I'm gonna start peeling off these and I'm gonna have a piece of wax paper to keep them stored on so I can use them again later. I think these turned out pretty good. I put the uh, two drones, I left them in so that they would match the paint job once they were in because that uh, fade happens over them. Uh, this next part, I wanted to fade in the blue to the hexagons. And I'm just using a piece of paper so that any overspray doesn't get on that stuff I just did. Uh, this is gonna kinda like have a transition into the hexagons and kinda have a good fade. If you do use a piece of paper or something to protect from overspray, if you keep moving the piece of paper, any lines it might create uh, will kind of go away. And 
Next, I went ahead and masked off the parts I just painted, and this is gonna allow me to get a good coat of blue on the two engine pieces on the left and right without um, messing up anything I've done previously. This paint sprays really well. It is made for an airbrush, but I'm always surprised just how well it sprays. I'm gonna take off all of this masking tape. One tip with this masking tape is before you mask off a piece of your model, um, put the masking tape maybe on your arm or your hand and remove it a couple times just to get it a little bit less sticky so you don't take anything off when you put it on the model. Sometimes if you leave it full, the full sticky that it comes directly off the roll, it'll pull some of the paint off. But uh, looking good, we have that solid blue coat now on the engines and I'm enjoying that. All right, much later I ended up uh, doing more masking and this is to give the gray accents on the side of the piranha. I, I also did the front of the engines and these are something I could paint with uh, a brush, but I find not only this color, but big flat areas just really, it, it'll look so much better in the end if I airbrush these instead of trying to brush. Um, so it definitely, for me, it's worth it. And in the end, it really, really looks good. All right, next, uh, got some more masking to do. This time we're gonna be painting the inside of the cockpit. Um, this also is gonna be a lot easier to do this and use less paint just to airbrush it. So we're gonna be airbrushing in there with some of the uh, Abaddon Black this time. I'm not doing the primer as this is some stuff that I will need to touch up with uh, paint and it's easier to mask that than it is the primer. And here we're gonna be doing a little bit of a uh, freehand to finish this part. I should have left this open earlier, but I forgot. So I'm gonna to try to do this with a brush and see how it looks. I think in the end, I, I would have liked to have airbrushed this too. Just um, some of the brush marks on top of that very gloss paint is, is it's just really hard to get, get rid of. But we'll see in the end uh, if it looks considerably worse or if it's okay and I can save it to step next time. All right, I'm gonna go back with the Abaddon Black and start working on the engines on the side. We're also gonna do in the small details and the bottom where there's vents. We're also gonna start doing some lining of all the little cracks. This is actually easier to do with regular paint than an ink, in my opinion. It really depends on how big the details you're filling in are. I feel like the details on piranhas and some of the tanks are just much easier to do with a very thin, good brush than they are to try to ink and clean up. Uh, also, uh, like at least for Newland Oil with the GW line, it doesn't come out as black, it comes out as a gray. Uh, so this also gives you a deeper, darker black color in the lines, which I like a lot more. Again, we're just gonna be doing these uh, black details all over. I even get the drones out and do them. As you can see, I did the edges in that same gray off camera. So now we're gonna get a uh, trusty lead belcher out and start doing some uh, metal work. We're gonna start filling out some of those details on the cockpit. One great thing about um, black paint is it makes uh, metallic paints come out way better. So a lot of times when you do paint a metallic, if you put a black coat, either primer or Abaddon black under it, it'll really bring out those metallic details.
As you can see here, I'm going back and painting over that black I did on the drone and it gives a bet, much better finish than if I had just painted this directly over that blue pearlescent. We're gonna do some details on the drone guns, these small carbines that are gonna go under the drones. And lastly, the helmets and shoulder pads I kept on the sprue. It makes it a lot easier to paint and have something to hold on to. Gonna go back with the Abaddon Black and a little bit of uh, satin varnish. This is basically my own uh, mix that is the same consistency as a contrast paint. And I use this on my infantry also. So it's basically a very watered down Abaddon Black with a little bit of medium in it so that it, it doesn't just run everywhere. And you end up having this uh, deep black contrast paint over the gray which gives you a nice kind of highlighting of the soft armor under the uh, Tau's, uh, on the Tau's uniform. All right, next I have a Walmart paint. This is a paint I used on my original army and I really like it. So I decided, hey, I'm gonna use this again on my new army. It's a metallic paint. Um, I'd have to double check the name there, but I loved it. It was great and it's been on almost every army I've had, at least on one model. So I decided to bring it back and use it. It's um, not as good as like a GW paint or a more professional paint, uh, but it actually is a pretty decent paint and I really like the color. So I'm gonna continue to use it until I run into issues with it. Um, I might switch to another paint, but I do like the, the color is a very kind of like rich copper color and it just it looks really good i like it a lot all right now we're going to be doing some dry brushing dry brushing the uh, bottom of these uh, guns the vents uh, the bottom of the the drones themselves and then we're also going to get to the bottom details from the Piranha. Just a real light coat of this is going to give it some great detail. We'll do this too in the inside and basically everything that's going to be, you know, you want that metal look on it. All right, we're going to get out some technical paints. These are pretty cool. These are the gemstone paints. Um, so you just put them over a metallic and they kind of like shine kind of glossy. I have a couple different colors of this. I have the blue and the green. Um, I think I also use, uh, for the red, I just use the technical blood paint, um, blood for the blood god paint. Uh, it actually makes a quite nice little red gem or lenses, um, surprisingly, if you use it right over some, uh, some silver. And these produce a really great gem effect, and so I use these a lot on buttons and panels and small little lights and stuff like that. And I'm using this Blood for the Blood God on all my carbines as the marker light uh, lens. So now I'm just going to pop in these two um, vents. They actually didn't need any glue. They were so push fit. Uh, and I'm gonna clean up the small bits I had from the sprues, the two helmets, uh, and the two backpacks. So I'll go ahead and start assembling everything. And you could definitely do this with the riders in, but I found it a lot easier to paint otherwise. So we're gonna go back with a little bit of Dawnstone to do some line edge highlighting on the gray bits. This is just gonna give them a little bit more of a pop. And I have to say that I do like the areas I airbrushed better, but the hand painted parts weren't bad either. So I think it's kind of, depending on how easy it is to mask off, I'm probably what I will or won't 
mask off and these uh, large armor pieces. The line, uh, line highlighting does take a while and I don't do it on every one of my models, but I feel like something with this with such sharp corners really lends well to having some accents of those sharp corners. I'm gonna do the same on the drones. All right, now we're gonna get out some Abaddon Black, and we're gonna be painting some uh, smoke effects. This is a real light, watered down. I used water and not, on purposely did not add any um, varnish to this, is because I want it to be a very dry and matte look to it. Next, what we're gonna be doing after playing some of those smoke effects is adding some weathering. Uh, the first thing with the weathering is I'm going to get a brush and kind of stipple on uh, a little bit of uh, black paint. This is also going to add some soot and some spots where maybe on re-entry it kind of like sooted up and started to burn. Next we're going to get some Rune Fang Steel and I'm going to kind of pick out areas along where I had that black smoke. This will be where maybe it wore through the armor completely and you can start to see some of the metal underneath. Uh, it's real easy to go overboard on this weathering. It's really, really easy just to do a little bit too much. So um, it's always something I try to have to keep myself honest on is to stop a little bit before I want to. Because you can always add more, but you can't remove it near as easily. I'm also just kind of hitting any sharp edges with this, so anything that would get worn off over time. So here's some uh, pictures of the finished model. Um, pretty pleased with it. The only thing I have not done at this point is if I uh, may be doing some custom flight bases and I will eventually be doing the sept markings and decals on this model. Um, but pretty much done. So let's go to my complete our uh, Tau Army list and I'm gonna check this off of my list. I have now done the TX4 Piranha, my second uh, model in my army. If you'd like to follow my journey painting minis and painting each every mini in the Tau range, just check out this last slide. I'll have a list of all my other videos. Well, hope to see you guys next time. Later.